Hey mini enthusiasts, how are you doing? Welcome back, it's part 33 of the Project Kit build. And I'm sure, as you can see, the updates are coming thick and fast now. We're just approaching sort of the final stages of the build now. And at the moment, I'm just uh, continuing to wire in the wiring loom on the car. And Mark is sorting out the left-hand side engine steady and the heater matrix piping and valve that goes on that side. So we're using all red silicon hoses and it's got a DSN aluminium anodized second engine steady and obviously the pipes for the heater matrix as well. So I'm just running the front end wiring loom there for the front lighting and just adapting some wires for the inhibitor switch which is on the front of the gearbox on an automatic mini. Now I would like to say the wiring was easy and most of it was it's pretty much plug and play on an SPI Mini it's fairly simple to work out where everything goes all the plug and plugs and harnesses are unique and we're using a brand new loom so everything kind of just fits in place where it should do there's the old couple of wires that you you know not quite sure about but quick reference back to the wiring diagram or a quick check with a voltage meter and it doesn't take long to work out where everything goes. Today was a nice day working on kit. Obviously we're into, this is the end of April going into May. So there's been some quite nice weekends. No chance to have the front door open on the garage. Let some air blow through. And uh, yeah, it's just quite nice. Bit of extra light as well. Bit of natural lighting just makes it easier to work on. As you can see, got the fuel tank ready there. So that's an SPI fuel tank. Um, obviously, because we're using an SPI engine wiring loom. So the fuel pump is inside the fuel tank itself. And I think uh, both SPI and MPI minis have internal in-tank fuel pumps. So you might notice Mark's not around at the moment. Unfortunately, uh, Lucy was poorly had to go to hospital and uh, stay overnight at hospital as well so a little bit worrying so uh, Mark went off to go and see Lucy um, I won't leave you in suspense she's okay so no problems uh, everything sorted out so back out of hospital now so glad Lucy's okay so obviously I just carried on with the car uh, trying to get the fueling system sorted out really So just going to take the uh, fuel pump out, set the unit and uh, just check the condition really. Uh, first problem we had was the uh, key was missing for the um, for the fuel cap. So uh, unfortunately that meant I had to break the fuel cup out, which is uh, thankfully quite easy to do. But... Uh, sure some of you 
watching this will have had fuel stolen from a Mini, which is quite frustrating. But unfortunately, it's very easy to do. Fortunately, with an SPI Mini, it has a flap inside, so when you do break the cap off, all the bits don't end up in the bottom of the tank. They just sit behind the flap and you can fish them out. State of that. And that's at it. So as you can see, uh, the inside of the tank was pretty corroded and that had affected the pump and the sender. So both needed replacing really. Uh, they corrode in the tank like that. Usually when the tanks left empty um, obviously if it's full of fuel uh, there's nowhere for condensation to form inside the tank uh, when it's left empty um, unfortunately condensation can build uh, and that can just corrode the tank so there's kind of a bit of a tip for you there if you want to stop your tank corroding I would say if you're leaving it over the winter uh, you're better off with a full tank of fuel in there. Like I say, there's nowhere for condensation to form then. Uh, but unfortunately, if you're laying it up for a prolonged period of time, that fuel ends up going stale. Uh, and even over the period of winter, I mean, three to six months is probably okay. You won't really get any issues unless it's a turbocharged car. So... I used to have an ERA turbo and yeah, you first sort of run after the winter running on slightly old fuel. Uh, it used to pink a little bit just because the octane, I assume, dies off. It's not quite as strong, not as many hydrocarbons. So next up, I'm just fitting a carbon canister up on the inner wing there and again, that's really something that's only fitted to later minis. I think it's fitted to the very late carburetor cars, carburetor cars with a catalyst, SPI minis and MPI minis. And the carbon canister, uh, it's just filled with charcoal. And what that does is it takes the fuel vapor or vent from the tank. Um, it vents that through the carbon canister and then that gets reburnt in the inlet manifold via a purge valve and the whole reason for doing that is so you don't get the horrible smell of fuel uh, on hot days or when the engine's running uh, I say horrible smell of fuel but some people like it I certainly do but I'm a bit of a petrol head so again we run into the problems where it is a carbureted shell and we're fitting a later fuel injection system on it so the brackets for the carbon canister uh, were not there nor the purge valve nor the holes for the pipes but it wasn't too bad to do to be honest And now I'm just refitting the bottom hose again. So there's a bit of to in and fro in here. So we started out last week, you'd have seen, I say last week, last update, I think, you'd have seen Lucy crawling under the car to fit the bottom hose. So that was fitting an SPI bottom hose. What we actually found was the pipe on the bottom of the inlet manifold, the manifold heater, manifold heating pipes were corroded. So we decided to use a non-SPI hose without the takeoffs for the inlet manifold. Uh, we later regret that. That's in the next update. I just put some oil in the car there, so we're getting close to starting it now. I won't uh, keep you waiting though, unfortunately. We don't start it in this update. That will definitely be next update though, where we get the car running. Uh, but just putting the oil in now, uh, just so don't forget to do it next time. Mark has been inside the car just sorting out the wiring and running the pipes to the heater inside the car.
moving on now. Um, Mark is running wires through the doors for the speakers. So Kit will have uh, door cards with uh, speakers built into them and central locking as well. I don't think we're having electric windows. I might be wrong there, but I think it's just central locking and the speakers. So there's two ways of running the wiring. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. Uh, Mark is doing it the right way here. So you'll find a lot of people cheat um, and they'll run the wires outside of the door hinge, if you know what I mean. Uh, and the problem with that is they're copper wires, copper work hardens, uh, and flexing the wires backwards and forwards, it really doesn't take long for them just to break and snap. So the correct way to doing it is running them kind of the most direct way, which is from the hinge panel to the inside frame of the door, the inside of the door skin. But unfortunately that means you've got to take the doors off and you've got to run some rubber trunk in as well. So. Minis never had, even the later MPI Minis never had wiring inside the doors. So this is kind of something you've got to make up. Uh, but you can get grommets for the doors, you can get the correct trunk in to run the wiring through. And like I say, if you do it properly, it will last. So that's what Mark's doing here. So well done Mark making a great job of that, doing it properly, which is what I like to see. So there you go, you see what I mean, it's a very neat and tidy installation that is. That just ensures that the wire doesn't flex too much. It's waterproof as well, uh, and that's going to last years that is. So like I said, it's wiring for speakers and wiring for central locking. And for the last minute or so of this video, I've just included the other side as well, just in case this is something you want to do. Um, you can see a little bit more detail from this side of the car. So this is kind of it for this update. Uh, there'll be another update coming very shortly. Like I said, I've got plenty of video waiting to upload. It's just, it does take probably three or four hours to upload this stuff, edit it, maybe a little bit longer than that actually and narrate it. Um, so in the next update we will have the engine running, um, which is quite a milestone. It's always nice to hear an engine run, or I, I find it nice anyway. So finally just for me to say thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Please give it a thumbs up and uh, I'll catch you again very soon. Cheers. Bye.